science fiction, a journey into the unknown. The Museum of Television and Radio presents... You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Press the button, my friend. Send me back into time. Space Patrol! Space, the final frontier. Make it so, Mr. Dead. I am not a number. I'm... Warning, warning. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We will control the horizontal. We will control the vertical. Television, science fiction, and fantasy have been partners for a long time. In fact, television itself, the idea of sending pictures through the air, was first imagined by a science fiction writer more than 300 years ago. 50 years ago, television became a household reality and with it dozens of wonderful science fiction programs. Television shows that have entertained, amazed, astonished, and even enlightened us. I'm William Shatner. And it is a great pleasure to meet you, sir. I am Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> and we welcome you to the Museum of Television and Radio Special, Science Fiction, A Journey into the Unknown. Joining us on this journey later this evening, Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia of Star Wars, and Dean Kane, Superman from Lois and Clark. So let's start our journey and sample what lies in store for us this evening. happens to be the twilight zone. I will not be pushed, filed, stamped, indexed, briefed, debriefed, or numbered. Two parallel worlds. Two, one, one. You are under arrest. Ladies and gentlemen, it's indescribable, but I can hardly force myself to keep looking at it. Wait a minute, something's happening. There's a jet of flames springing from that mirror that leaps right at the advancing men. It strikes them head on. Lord, they're turning into flames. The famous 1938 broadcast of Orson Welles' production, War of the Worlds, a program that literally created panic in the streets. We open our show tonight fittingly with a segment called They're Here, Aliens on Earth. And we discover the panic over alien invasions that Wells started on radio was tailor-made for television. Any moment now, something is going to be arriving that is guaranteed to stand your hair on end. You don't think they'll land in broad daylight, do you? Something's happening! Dear God, what is it? Have they landed? They've landed. What would I do if they really came? In 1963, we saw the first wave of alien invasions seize control of our television sets. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to the outer limits. Tapping into the terror of its time, The Outer Limits is an anthology series that showcased alien monster stories with a message. Fear cannot save us. Rage cannot help us. We must see the stranger in a new light. The series routinely tested the inner resolve of human nature against alien true grit. Your race is too prejudiced to tolerate any differences from its own kind. She saw me only as a monster. What is and the galaxy being an alien stranger appears when a radio engineer solidifies sound waves from space. 
then by accident the alien is unleashed on a community that doesn't understand its curiosity line up on the transmitter shed don't fire Each week, the Outer Limits lined up some of the creepiest creatures ever seen on television. <laughs> Having gained a foothold in the Outer Limits, the alien invasion of television was underway. In 1967, lost, lonely, and looking for a shortcut, architect David Vincent witnessed an alien landing. Realizing the importance of appearances, the aliens got smart. This time, they were back on prime time disguised as humans. Well, sort of. There were no doubts the aliens had landed in V, one of the most popular miniseries of all time. V combined a serious political statement with science fiction drama. This time, the aliens not only looked normal, but they were organized. We have come because we need your help. There are certain chemicals and compounds which we must manufacture, which alone can save our struggling civilization. And in return, we will gladly share with you all the fruits of our knowledge. Everywhere around the nation and the world, visitors are keeping order and making friends. V began when I read Sinclair Lewis's novel, It Can't Happen Here, about the rise of fascism in America like it had happened in Germany and, and Italy. So then it occurred to me that, wait a minute, maybe there was a way to really take the, the Nazi occupation of Europe and translate it into um, a situation where we had a whole alien culture coming here ostensibly to be our friends, and then slowly, like the Nazis did, they revealed a different face. They've come to rape our planet and kill us. They are not who they appear to be. This is not science fiction. This is what they are. It's just a trick. We ought to define our overall plan of resistance. Right. Good. I agree with that. Yeah. Firstly, to undermine all visitor activity, sure. impede their progress every way that we can. And then secondly, I think we should find out what their hidden goals are. Where's the chemical you guys are making? There's no chemical. What the hell? It... You are here to take the water. Eventually, the alien forces would turn back once sympathetic aliens joined the human resistance movement. And for the first time, aliens and humans we're fighting on the same side. 